So people have been teasing me, uh, you know, the last couple of days about how do you spell Fizar or Fiar or, or whatever we're calling it. So Matthew, which which was your preferred embodiment? It was your your, your name. So this spelling. Okay, so I got it right this time. I, I, I think I made up the Fizar by accident at one point. Yeah, I'm not good at doing this paper. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, okay, so this this is this has been kind of a percolating issue for quite a while. Um, we have some hacky solutions to some of these problems in some of the places in the kernel, and this is an effort to kind of give us a solid footing where we have solutions to these problems that we can actually build on and make the world better instead of instead of abusing Scatterlist. And uh, Scatterlist has been the bane of a lot of these sort of things. So Matthew kicked this off with the number one here. He, he was interested in speeding up get user pages, right? If you've got one gig or two meg or whatever, you still fragment them into 4K and return them in a, a linear array, and that's just awful. Um, it really, really is. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in number two. I would like um, something called peer-to-peer -peer DMA to work. You, uh, Stephen Bates talked about this on Monday, and his version of it uses struct pages. And there's another version of this that we're very interested in, especially for VFIO, that just uses raw PFNs. And we had a little side panel um, on, the, on the mailing list about this, and it, it basically turns out VFIO runs in so many environments that you're not going to get struct pages for it because you know it's not going to work on S390. It's not going to work on RISC-V. It's so far away. So we need a non-struct page solution for that. Uh, okay. But, but number two is just PFNs. Not it's, it's the struct pages. No, no, met, no metadata. It's the struct page that's a problem. Right. No, but no, but I mean, like, the solution you're going for is, is just PFNs, or are you looking for there, a little bit? There will have to be of some metadata, I think, um, because that's the way the DMA API works. The DMA API needs a little bit of metadata to know where the page originates so that it can compute the correct PCI offset when it does mapping on strange embedded ARM platforms. Don't ask. Uh, we are not going to go into that, but it's a it's an issue. We need a little bit of data, and that you can see the data already in the struct page environment because when you create the PG map for P2P DMA pages, that that little bit of data is in there. Um, okay, and then number three, this was talked about by by Keith. This is, I would like to make the block API run faster because I've got this silly thing where I take a BIO and then I just mem copy it kind of slowly to a scatter list after allocating the scatter list, and then I. Then I allocate, then I do a map, and then I get the same numbers back, and it's all kind of kind of dumb. Um, and in RDMA land, we have these crazy users that would like to, to pin memory quite a lot, like hundreds of gigabytes. And that's their application. They pin 100 gigabytes of memory, and they do I.O. to it forever. So currently, we store all of this in a scatter list, and we use 28 bytes per, per chunk. And we, we have a lot of, you know, you, you waste a healthy amount of memory in your system just keeping track of the stuff so that I can unmap it and then unpin it. It's, it's, it's kind of useless. And this is so far down the list here, but the IOMMU driver interface under the DMA API is just horrible. It's really slow. Every single page, it, it walks the page tables and then carefully inserts it, and then it goes to the next contiguous one, and it walks the page tables again and inserts it. So yeah, that could be improved too. Um, Matthew. Uh, if, I, if I can channel Christoph and add number six, uh, cleanliness. Uh, Christoph really, really hates it that we have the scan. Oh, I've got a whole slide about that. <laughs> so the one of the challenges in this area has been that the scatter list, Christoph really hates the scatter list. I think we all hate the scatter list. But the problem with the scatter list is that it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. And every leaky abstraction that it has has been abused and misused someplace or just it's just being used wrong and what do you do with that i know logan tried to tackle some of this in very a very narrow and it was like hopeless you know it's just too many drivers so any hope of doing something better in scatter list is is gone i think i think it's it's a write-off i don't think anybody wants to see that i'm, I'm bringing this up mostly to um to kind of share this but yeah, Scatterlist is what we've had, and it, uh, if you're not familiar with Scatterlist, it's kind of weirdly designed for the future that we live in. <laughs> Scatterlist was based on this idea that you would allocate a linear bit of memory, and you would have some, some goofy arm or something that had a GART 
and it might translate only the pages that were above 32 bits because you were running on old hardware that didn't support 64-bit addressing. So you'd have a mismatch of translated and untranslated addresses. But we don't live that in that world anymore. After you do a DMA map, you either get the CPU addresses you passed in, maybe plus an offset, or you get a single chunk of linear IOVA. So we do not need all this complicated stuff of having like every page is in general. We need it in special cases still, but in the fast path, like in, in Keith's fast path, we don't need this stuff. Like you can get away without it. So you, you can optimize towards the fast path where you can say my DMA map is the same as my CPU addresses or my DMA map is, is described by 16 bytes. So we can significantly reduce the amount of memory, the amount of cache lines we dirty, you know, everything. We can do it, we can do a lot better. Um, so I got into this because I wanted to do something with VFIO. I've been working on VFIO for a while. I replaced the, the management of the IO MMU with something else. And in the process, I removed the VFIO support for peer-to-peer -peer DMA that had been hacked in and had a kind of a security issue. So I took it out because I didn't want to put the security issue back in. And now I would like to bring this back. And I want to, what I want to do is create a DMA buff that is a handle for your peer-to-peer your -peer memory that doesn't have struck pages. I would like to pass that to the IO MMU stuff. And I would like to put it in the IO MMU and hold the reference count so I don't have a security problem. And currently, DMA buff is designed around scatterless. So I did the obvious thing that DRM has done, and I did what DRM did, and, and Christoph didn't approve. So we're going to try and make an improvement to the DMA API that will allow us to do all these things. Um, I had some time with the DMA API maintainer earlier today, and maybe we have some agreement of what it will look like. And it's probably not going to be quite like this, but this is this is kind of the the big picture here. So you have these new concepts where you do something without a scatter list. Um, you DMA map this new thing. You'd go in and you get back a, a DMA list. And we can introduce the optimizations I talked about, where we can optimize for IO MMUs, where you only have the 16 bytes of storage. And you can optimize for identity. You can make peer-to-peer -peer work. Peer-to-peer -peer doesn't really work today unless you have the struct pages, which is a kind of a, an annoying hassle. And from there, then we can talk about maybe we can use the same structures, maybe the same API, we can put in thin user pages, maybe we can return folios from there. Like it's, a, it's kind of an adventure. And as I started looking at this, I realized that the possibility of doing this in like a one-shot conversion is basically nil. There's too much code, there's too much entanglement in check in, into scatterless. Like even RDMA, I, I can do most of RDMA in one shot. But, <laughs> but somebody added DMA buff to RDMA. Um, that might have been me. Uh, and so then I have to convert DMA buff as well. And that, that's too big. Like, I can't do all of that at once. So I, I want to see this kind of incremental world where we can, take, we can still take a scatter list from DMA buff. I can feed it into a, an API adapter. And I can use it in a new world after I convert RDMA. And then, then, then I'll go on and fix DMA buff. But I can't do it all at once. So my idea has been to create an, uh, effectively a non-leaky API for iteration over these concepts. So you can iterate over your CPU pages. You can iterate over your physical page, your physical PFNs. You can iterate over your DMA VAP. And under that non-leaky abstraction, I will hide the details. And we will make it so that one of those things is you can iterate over a scatter list, right? So I can take in a scatter list and I can feed it to new code. And then I can fix it piece by piece, slowly, slowly, slowly. Um, so it's, it's it's a little bit different because scatter list was micro optimized to be like minimal number of CPU instructions everywhere. And this is the opposite. This is, we have made an API which is really solid that we can put behind the scenes what we want, but you're gonna pay a penalty. You're gonna do more branches. You're gonna do more function calls to get there. So, uh, yeah. Yes. It would more, be more instructions per range, fewer instructions per page, right? Yes. <laughs> well, this, this becomes into the interesting question. So, like, a lot of the users at, at the hardware level, once you get these things, you need to program hardware. And there's two popular ways to program hardware. You're either programming range lists, like, what's, you know, SGL is typically called, or an SGE or something, or you're programming page lists. And I think like something like NVMe has both, and something like RDMA has both. 
So if you're programming a page list, you need to take your range, you need to break it up into pages, and you need to iterate over, you know, oh, maybe my hardware only does 4K pages, so I, I have to break it up. So in RDMA, we've already built abstractions and APIs to do this, and, and part of what I've drafted is I took those and I put them in under common code so that anybody could use them, and you can take your ranges and it breaks it up into 4K or 8K or whatever you want, and it just gives you what your hardware asks for. You, 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 you tell it what the hardware wants, and it gives it to you. Like, yeah, <laughs> saves lots of code. Um, so when I started working on this, I'm like, this doesn't sound too bad. And I started at the logical point, because I, the DMA API is kind of the, the, the line. Uh, you know, we, it, to do anything useful, the DMA API demands a scatter list. So to do, if I want to do something else, I need to get the DMA API to do something different. And this is where I got quickly an education in why this is so freaking hard. So we have 23 of these DMA API implementations called DMA mapping ops, DMA map ops, and that's a lot. And they all implement, right now, they all implement weird, old-fashioned IO MMUs, often GARTs, often weird things, and they've all been kind of micro-optimized for their weird little architectures in the time period that they were written for. So I really don't want to touch them. Um, in the modern world, we're encouraging everyone to use the IOMMU layer and something called dmaiommu.c, which is like the common code for operating an IOMMU. So you either have identity mode, which is common code, or you have this common IOMMU code, and that covers all the modern cool hardware except for PowerPC and some ARM32 stuff, which hopefully can be fixed. Oh, and S390, which has been fixed. It just needs to be merged. So we're, we're doing pretty good. Um, but there's going to be some kind of problem with the DMA API. And my sort of feeling is we're, we're leaning towards getting to being able to do number three on this list. So number three is we convert the modern world, ARM32, S390. I don't know about PowerPC. It would be nice to convert PowerPC, but I don't know about PowerPC. And then we just provide some backwards compatibility for the old stuff. It'll still work. It'll be very slow. It'll still work. Uh, and we don't try and do number four with the scream face there, uh, which would be trying to add this to everything everywhere perfectly. Damn, I was hoping to ship you the contents of my basement. I don't want your basement, Matthew. <laughs> I, I, I don't have room for your basement, so I don't, I don't want to touch these old architectures. I think they're fine the way they are, and they're never going to run RDMA or NVMe anyway, so why do, why do we need to fix them? Uh, okay, so, so this seems, uh, I don't know, does anybody disagree? Okay, that's a consensus, I'm moving on. Uh, now the other challenge that I've been looking at, so that was the DMA API, I think, we're, I think we got some ideas how to, to get there. The other side is the GUP side. And GUP today is used in so many different places, and some of them are really performance critical, like Fudexes. We wanna do a page walk for a Fudex, and we wanna do that really fast. How do I make it return something different? than a page list. I want it to call a function call to append it to my abstracted you know, API that I've built. I want to go append this chunk that I've read from the page table and something else will deal with it. So what, what are we comfortable with here? Like, Are we comfortable with adding some, some slowness to GUP to do this indirection, maybe some static branches, maybe some indirect branches? I don't know. Um, but, but is this going to be? The output of this, is it going to be like a, another, like a, like a folio, but not a folio? Is it going to be a well, net mem? Is it going to be a we, something else? We need lists. We Realistically, need lists. we need lists, right? Like, like the use case that everybody has is they want to get a chunk of user VA, and they want to get a list of what that is. If it's, you know, two make folios or a couple two make folios and a 4K folio, they want the list. So my reading of this is that we need two. We, we, we do have two different users, uh, two different kinds of users. You're, you're, you're right, we have the few text case, and I haven't really been thinking too hard about the few text case, but I think the few text case can be get user page. Yeah, that Lorenzo's work has been moving, I think, in that direction nicely, where we will have like a get user page that's really good for that. And, and then the other use case is basically get user range, yes. where, where, where you want physical addresses for this, array of, for, for this range of, you want a, a, a vector of physical ranges, so, so you, you, you have you know, a, a physical start and you have a length, and you have tuples of that. 
Yes, I think that that's likely the case. Um, it's a little bit complicated because in various places in all of this, we need we do sometimes need to know if the struct page is there, and we do need to pull information out of the struct page. As counterintuitive as that is, the DMA API actually pulls information out of the struct page when it's working, which is annoying. But it, that's how it's been built. I mean, we, we, we can convert back from physical to struct page. If you know that the struct page is there. Right, so and, and so then you have to handle the cases when it's not. not but so I mean, to, today that fails, right? That, that's an e-fault. Right? If you call get yes, user page and, user and, pages, and there is yeah. no struct page, you get an e-fault. Right, but what I'm looking at is like the whole picture. I would like to go with a kind of a similar language, a similar API from get user pages through DMA map to hardware. And I would like to solve the case where get user pages always returns folios. And I would like to solve the DMA buff case where I don't always get folios. I get TFNs as well. So, so you want a range and you want a bit that says this is a struct page memory. And this is not a struct page memory. That's like the generalization of that concept. And then to even further, what you really kind of, to be really efficient, what you want is like here's my handle for my non-struct page memory that tells me where it came from, what it's for how do I DMA map it, which is that other little piece. Now we could, we could still use one bit and we could use like a, an interval tree or something to get back to the handle by looking at the TFNs. It just depends how efficient you want this to be. Uh, it doesn't really matter, I think, for my use cases anyway. Um, so, but the few dexes and things like that, like how do we structure GUP that everybody's happy? Like if we have a single, if we have a GUP get single page, you would still have to substantially duplicate all of GUP to do all the page table walks, all the fast stuff, all the slow stuff. Is that what we want to do? Like we already have a couple copies of GUP in the tree. We have the page walk .c, we have GUP, we have a couple places where just open codes, like you can see it sometimes like, you know, PMD, PGD, the dunk, 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 dunk. There are a lot of them. Do we want to do something here? I know Matthew had talked about making like a page table iterator thingy at one point, and I thought that was neat and terrifying. <laughs> Who said no? No, oh, too bad. Mm. Let's do it and call it something else Matthew says. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jason, you know, one question. Like you mentioned that you want something that is doesn't have a struct page or like return something, but how, how would you actually like protect that it's not going away or getting reused or is that another concern? I mean, if you have a page, you can like pin it, you increase the rest yeah, yeah, count no, and no. whatsoever, but how would that be handled? This is what the DMA buff is for. So the, the DMA buff is the handle that protects the memory. And when I, when I ask the DMA buff to give me a list of the memory that's held inside of it, I promise not to let go of the DMA buff until I also let go of that list. So it moves the reference count from being like a per PFN thing to like a per file thing effectively because the DMA buff is a file. Um, it, it would be like ref counting pages if you ref counted the VMA, which we don't do in the MM, but we can do this for these special cases. Okay, and the, the other question I have is, uh, I think right now we, we disallow get user pages when we have a PFN map. We do. Thing. And I yeah, well, would you have to change that or is it is just another block? Because I otherwise you always have like a struct page, you can do your ordinary PFN to page and yeah, or I PFN to folio. So I don't propose to change GUP at all. I think GUP should stay where you always get struct pages back because there's no other way to get an object and hold a reference counter. At least it's very hard. I mean, maybe we could, it, it, it's hard. I've thought about it, it's kind of hard. What I want, I want some pages to come from GUP and I want some pages to come from DMA buff is what would be nice. And you know, maybe at the extreme, you would, GUP would fail and then you'd probe the VMA and you'd say, oh, this is a DMA buff VMA. I'm just gonna get a DMA buff, I'll stash it away, I'll hold a ref count, then I'll get the pages out of it and I'll, uh, I'll append them to my list so I can handle like mixed maps and other weird things. And places that care about this, and I think there's really only one place that would want something so complicated, and that is VFIO. They can do this extra work. I don't need to put it in the core code. So, so couldn't you like implement that, that you have like like your new fancy function and it calls old style get user pages, and if that fails whatsoever, and then you just convert from whatever like array of pages you had, or 
folios ideally or whatever we are able to come up with internally just convert that to your new representation that you don't have to duplicate each and every gup function just to handle both types well it's, it's not duplicating a gup function when you go and get the pages out of the dma buff it gets them from somewhere else like yeah right but i mean it's like it's just like one part of the implementation if i get it right you, you try first like get user pages otherwise you fall back to your dma buff well thing. In a lot of cases, the DMA buff things are passing by file descriptor. So you don't ever call a GUP anyway. You already have uh, okay. you already have a file descriptor. The only kind of wonky case is historically VFIO has used VMA as the handle for these things. So for compatibility, it would be very nice to be able to go from a VMA to get the DMA buff file descriptor and then just do the DMA buff special stuff as though you had passed the file descriptor. And I think that's good enough. I don't know that we need to go deeper into that rat hole with GUP. GUP is already kind of difficult. So I, I'm more for leaving it the same. So yeah, on on the just on on the structure of gup.c or whatever, I, it, it occurs to me that you you want to put on your new API, put it in there, and then just opportunistically factor stuff out. And I think one of the big opportunities is the page table walker because I don't care what you call it, I, you know that's that's what the duplication is. Yeah, it's, right. It's but I don't wrong. think you should call it. Got v2 exactly. It's more like this you've got this additional thing, it's get preserved pages or whatever. Yeah. And then you opportunistically use whatever so GUP provides and you factor out common stuff and just call it good. So there's kind of two approaches I thought about. One, we could kind of do that. We could put if statements like if new GUP mode, then then call a function, old GUP mode, append the array, and you could you could and then maybe you factor and stuff. And GUP v2 would be kind of like um, I take GUP and I got C and I compile it twice, maybe. You know, if we really, really cared about performance, we could, we could pull a stunt like that. Um, so then the, the fast version is fast because it's, it doesn't change, and the slow version is slow. But then you've got two copies of the thing. I don't know. It's not appealing. It depends how much we care about the Felix case and other really performance sensitive cases. But, but I, thought this, I thought your new thing, your new thing was for, for users that understand the new thing. Like, w why do you care about old users calling the old thing. Well, be because we have about a thousand lines of page walking code in GUP that is exactly the same for the old thing and the new thing. And the old thing is people care about performance a lot. So how do I, how do, I do that? How do I, how do I oh, take I a thousand lines okay. of code and just I just need to change it a little bit, <laughs> little, little tiny changes without affecting substantially the performance. In inject a BPF thing and. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm moving on now. Um, so I think I already kind of talked about these pieces in, in the other slides, but yeah, I'm, uh, I've kind of realized that even for NVMe, they have page lists, and it would be really helpful to be able to have the segmentation approach that RDMA's got. I, I know DRM has the same issue. I, I see this in other places. Um, and DMA buff gets, gets kind of fixed. Uh, so this is the distillation of Keith's, or yeah, Keith's slides. Um, so today, it, it goes through this adventure um, what I've been sketching is we take the BIO and we can convert it into, like I said, a, like an adapter for an iterator, and then we can feed it through the new API. What Christoph has sort of proposed is that we change the way we view the DMA ops to be more modern, and instead of having the DMA mo ops actually process like a BIO or something, we expose more of the underworkings, and we say the DMA ops are more like you allocate an IOVA space and you map something in the IOVA space like the IOMME lets you do, and then we let NVMe deal with the BIO and, and use these primitives so it can be super efficient. So it's sort of decomposing the problem. It's moving, it's moving the code we have to just different places. Um, I think it could work out. It needs a little work in the IOMMU to factor it, but that's okay. Um, but I think the, the, the kind of the general dream is you get to uh, a world where you can take the BIO, you could do whatever the new DMA ops are, and you get your answer back, and you program your hardware. Um, when I look at this from a reusability perspective, especially if you don't care about micro-optimizing, what was it, 12 million IOPS per core, uh, then you probably want some helpers, you probably want something like scatter list where you can just stick stuff in it, you can call a function, and then you get something out of it, and you can make your simple driver that way. So I, I have been sketching this R list kind of API that is that. It, it lets you have lists of CPU stuff, it lets you have lists of DMA stuff. That was one of the cardinal sins of scatter list, is that it didn't have the type safety, so let's put the type safety in. 
and it gives you a set of helpers to work with in your respective worlds that are useful for, for drivers and things. So I'll negotiate with Christoph. He's, he, he seemed quite interested. So that's, that's the end of what I had prepared for slides. Oh, I'm running on time. Um, feedback, I've posted a couple things about this, and there's been devastating silence. So. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, that's <laughs> in general. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't understand it. Now I understand it better. So yeah, I can ask some comments. Um, actually, no, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it sounds insane. Like the, like, I, I, I actually question, like, the, if scatterless is still going to, like, if, if this is useful for the new world order, like, the scatterless need to be, like, I, like is, is, that, is that just for completeness? Or, like, do you really need, see the need to go back and, re and rewrite all the scatterless users? No, I don't want to do that. Good Lord, no. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like Matthew's X-ray conversion, right? It would be super cool if people could use the same new, easy-to-use API, and that would be great. But realistically, it's even worse than X-ray. It's even worse than Radix Tree. There's there's a ten times the usage of Radix Tree, so it's it's. Oh, also, so, so your your scatterless conversion is more about like people that want to do it the scatterless way, but do it in a type-safe new way. Like it's it's for it's for new scatterless users. Or wh yeah, yeah. Okay. Do scatterless use. So yeah, you're, you're sorry. Yeah. So the, the, there'd be a new API to, that you could use if you wanted to. And my thinking again is sort of based around this abst very abstracted iteration thing, and uh, and you could put scatterless inside it. So when I'm doing conversions, I can do them piecemeal. I can say, oh, you know, this part of the world is still scatterless. DMA buff is still scatterless. This new part is the new API, and I can bridge them, at least for this time for for this. You know, kernel release, and I can remove the bridge in the next kernel release, and I can do things incrementally because even the sketch I've got so far is like 20,000 lines or something. It's completely nuts. <laughs> it need, I need it to be smaller. I can't, I can't get that merged in that form. So when I was looking at this, and I probably overlooked something major that you can just explain to me what I yes. overlooked. Um, I was thinking that we would just leave Scatterless the hell alone. Yes. Um, introduce introduce the fire, yeah. uh, fire to scatterless conversions, and then once every single user of SG underscore page and SG underscore whatever <laughs> the other stuff was, we could actually just remove that from the scatterless, and then drivers would just be unconverted and be able to, you know, we just shrunk the scatterless. What did I get wrong? What did I miss? That, that you could ever do that, right? Like oh, there, okay. there are so many SG to page callers all over the place. I swear there were like five when I looked. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of a, like SG page? SG underscore page, yeah. No. No. I, I, I missed something then. Never mind. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Um, it's complicated. So the scatter list is two things, right? It's a list of CPU things and a list of DMA things, and they're sort of inseparable. They, they become unified at the DMA API level. So a lot of places, there's not that many, uh, a lot of places, oh, I have to stop, but a lot of places the, the subsystem creates a scatter list for you and feeds it into a driver. So the subsystem does the SG page bit, and then the driver gets it pre-populated, but the driver is still mucking about with it. So it's, you're still stuck with scatter list. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you.